It's really lovely to have you here as, you know, someone who was involved in the Brits and Rights. So to get this opportunity to speak to you is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And we just have some, a few questions that we would like you to answer, just so we can get an insight of what really happened that Sony was there. My name is Leela Hassan Howe, and I grew up partly in the United Kingdom, but partly in a tiny island called Zanzibar in East Africa. So I've had the, uh, the opportunity, I would say, of the British experience, as well as living in Africa for part of my life. What was your connection to the uprising? So the uprising in Brixton, I lived in Brixton. I lived on Mail Road, which was parallel to what they called the front line. And the front line was really a black stronghold at that time. We're talking about 1981. Brixton was a poor community, but Brixton was a very strong community. There was a real sense of community presence amongst the black community in Brixton at that time. So in 1981, when the uprising happened, I was a resident in Brixton and lived in the heart of Brixton. What do you think was the main cause of the uprising? So I think the cause of the uprising has a history and it's a history of how the police treated black people in Brixton and in other black communities, but we're talking about Brixton. And it's a history that goes back probably a decade even before 1981. There had been so many cases of police malpractice, of beating up and framing young black men in particular, but also working class people in their parties, in the house parties that they had. And so there, there had been a whole um, history of police malpractice in Brixton. But what people say caused the uprising is of course Operation Swamp. And Operation Swamp was a very intense stop and search um, by the police of anybody who lived in and around Relton, Mayo, all the surrounding roads. So my husband and I who lived on Mayo Road, we were stopped by the police when we were going shopping to Brixton Market. And in 81, I was in my 30s, my husband was in his 30s. So we weren't youth, we weren't people who you, you could say were on their way to do any malpractice. But they were literally stopping and searching anybody as we were just going about our lawful business. And that was very intense and that went on for a couple of days. And you could just feel the pressure and the tension rising in Brixton. We were a very close community and people were just talking to each other and saying, this is a liberty, this is just a step too far. So that's the trigger. But as I've tried to explain, the history to the uprising goes back a decade or two decades before in terms of what the police were doing in Brixton. The other trigger for Brixton is what happened um, the month before, which is the Black People's Day of Action, when 20,000 people marched through London to protest the New Cross fire. And the campaign around that and the consciousness around that was very intense. So people say that in Brixton, although I didn't hear it myself, is a lot of the youth were saying this is for New Cross. Um, so that was another issue that triggered the uprising in Brixton in 81. How has your life changed since? I mean, I live an ordinary life. I'm a pensioner. I've retired. But I'm also very politically conscious. I still am. I'm still very much aware of po political and social issues that go on in the black community. But in terms of how my life changed, materially it changed because after the Brixton uprising, a lot of money was poured into Brixton. I was living in a squat and the council came and offered free of charge to rebuild the outside of my house and to give me a grant so that I could drop the in in inside of the house. So materially, the uprising benefited a lot of people in Brixton because a lot of money then came into the area in order to deal with the deprivation and the poor neighborhood that it was. So, so I benefited in that sense, without a doubt. What do you think is the legacy of the uprising? So I think the legacy of the uprisings is the understanding that when you oppress people and when you treat people the way black people were treated in Brixton at that time, that they themselves will do something about it. I don't think you can rely on the government, social workers, do-gooders to come in. At the end of the day, we have to do something ourselves about our condition. And I think that remains to today, that you know we've seen that with Black Lives Matter, that it's when these big movements happen that social change happens within society. It isn't done because people become millionaires or people achieve things. It's done because social movements say what's going on has to stop and society has to change. So I think that's the legacy, that change has to happen if we're to get racial and social justice in this society. Do you think Black Lives Matter has helped decrease racial injustice today? 
So I think what Black Lives Matter movement did was it made society more aware of racism. And a lot of institutions are now doing right throughout British society, from the health service to government institutions to, I would like to say the police, but I'm not sure. But all the major institutions in this country are very conscious now of race and racism and want to make sure that their institutions are fairer. So I think that's what Black Lives Matter has, has done. Whether in society racism has decreased, I don't think movements can decrease racism. I think movements raise awareness of issues. And then it's up to us and up to people in power and institutions to act to decrease racism within those institutes. And I think that that's what's happening at the moment. Since the uprisings, have you partaken in any campaign? Yes, I was on the Black Lives Matter movement, although it was in the height of COVID and all my family said I shouldn't go out there, I'm too old and I'm going to get sick. I decided to go on the one that was outside the American embassy because I thought that was the one that had the most significance. So I marched for the Black Lives Matter movement. I marched against Donald Trump when he visited Britain. I think I've been on two anti-Trump marches, actually. So yes, I demonstrated against Trump when he was in power and came to Britain, and that was a quite large and very lively and humorous demonstration. And I've also uh, participated in, in smaller campaigns around specific issues. So uh, thank you very much for answering our questions. It's really helped us to see what it was like from a perspective of someone who was actually there and it really gives me gives me hope, you know, that and now I know that racism is actually is actually starting to decrease because as you've said that, mm -hmm. you know, that as long as you you said that you're an optimist and as long as we keep our heads high, it's not just gonna be like MPs that will change mm -hmm. racism. Yeah. It's gonna be us yeah. and that's exactly what we're trying to do and we're gonna do. Okay, that well that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.